I'm Daniel Lantrip, and fish hate me. Something's wrong that I don't know if I earned this at some point for something I've done wrong in the past. I've got luck or something. <laughs> if it's me, if it's the fish, if it's the world against me, but fish just hate me. You put a spin rod in my hand, I can catch a fish. You put a fly rod in my hand, I'm not gonna catch a fish. I really do get stoked to see a big fish come to the boat. It's just not usually in my hands. <laughs> my pain is that we can be the same place, same gear, same target species, same conditions. I'm just never the lucky angler. <laughs> Coming out of last year, I had a lot of confidence with my fly fishing abilities on a scale that's probably not applicable to most serious fly anglers. I mean, to be able to go from someone who just kind of did it here and there growing up and to picking up the fly rod, being intentional or whatever I could and having the opportunity to go down to Louisiana and catch some fish on the fly. I felt really, really good in my abilities or at least in my growth as a fly fisherman. I want to kiss you. Oh, I felt like it was, it was a locked in, done deal. I mean, as long as there was fish and I had a rod in my hand and the boat was in front of these fish, I knew that I'm gonna catch a fish. We try and make it, make it a point to put, put aside time as a group of friends to do a dedicated international trip every year. And this isn't like your standard run of the mill, big lodge, you know, all expenses paid, the this, this stuff you see you know, on social media. Woo, get cozy. It smells like a fart in here already. God, you're gross. I didn't Grody. I didn't do it. This is something that we all work really hard in planning and preparing for that we try and do on a pretty strict budget. We're all normal guys with families and whatnot. And on these kind of trips, when you work that hard in your preparation, you feel pretty confident by the time you get there, as long as you make it, that you're gonna be successful. I felt pretty confident coming into Columbia I mean, it was personally a year of, of growth and experience in fly fishing, but we'd gotten, as a group, we'd gotten through all the Columbia stuff. We'd done all the preparation. We knew what we were getting into. We knew we, we knew we had the right gear. We knew we had the right guides. We knew we had the right time of the year, the right opportunities, the right experience. We were ready. I knew that I could catch a tuna on the fly, and that was my goal. We'd all caught tuna on the poppers. <laughs> we woke up and decided, hey, it's time to start putting the fly rods first. We get out, we have a beautiful morning, sun's up high, the water's clean and clear. We get, I don't know, five miles from the, uh, from the lodge and we come across this school of dolphins and tuna just mixed in together that's absolutely huge. One of the most incredible things I've ever seen on the water. I mean, there was these dolphins and tuna working in tandem. There was acres and acres of these fish. And so we start chasing these fish down. Today's the day, these are, this is the school we need. I'm doing it, I'm picking up the fly rod. Fish are doing everything they're supposed to be doing. They're working on top. I mean, it's perfect. You're standing on the front of a boat, you're trying to charge down the school of fish. You know, you're trying to hold onto the rail with one hand, you're trying to keep your line clear with the other hand, and you're only got a second when the boat is coming to a stop and the fish are still there, and we come up on the school. In a minute! This is it, I know in my head, this is the shot, I'm gonna hook up. I'm trying to clear my line without falling off the damn boat. I'm losing my footing. I'm slipping and sliding all over the boat. You know, tuna are, are almost jumping into the hole of the boat. Dude. And the fish, instead of diving like they normally do, they just keep working towards the boat. I'm going to cast.
<laughs> and I mean, there's no other way to say it. I start falling apart very rapidly. Catching it if, it if it jumps on the boat when you have a fly rod in your hand. It felt like they were taunting me, like, come on, come on, come on. As they continue to work towards us, I'm in shambles on the deck, and they're like, hey, here I am. If you want to throw something out here, I'm going to eat it. I I you spend all this time prepping and preparing and improving your skill set and you don't know if you're going to get to go because of the COVID restrictions and after all this travel, money, time, effort, the fish just laugh in your face. I can still close my eyes and see that school working towards us and it absolutely haunts me every time I think about picking up a fly rod. After that bad day in Columbia, I'm not sure I picked up the fly rod <laughs> for the rest of that trip. When I got home, I was pretty demoralized. It was tempting to give myself a little time off from the fly rod, but Coming back home to Orange Beach and with the little time that I've got between work and having a family, <laughs> any chance I can have to go down to the beach and, and you know try and catch whatever's biting is a good opportunity. You know, I'm having a great time out there. Got a fly rod in my hand and my two toddlers are watching me do something that I love to do and they're just as excited to see me pull in that fish too. Just going back to to the first fish I ever caught in saltwater with a fly rod. Just the most basic, frowned upon <laughs> fish to catch on the fly for most saltwater fishermen, but it's an absolute blast. In my mind, if you can't go down there and be satisfied with catching a couple of lady fish or a blue fish or a Spanish mackerel on the fly, you need to hang it up because at the end of the day, that time spent outside just catching those fish, going back to the basics, whether it be a, a good day or a bad day, that, that 20 minutes, 30 minutes, three hours, whatever you got to spend, that's a good day. The only thing I know that's gonna happen is that I'm gonna keep chasing these fish and I'm ready to get hurt again. A boosh. Get the AV chug. Man, sorry, my brain's not working. Uh, ben, I haven't had enough limonadas for this yet. That wasn't sass, that was honesty. <laughs> God dang it, flies, the second we see a damn redfish. <laughs>